Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray feeling good, Lewis's. Welcome to the offices of Duke & Duke, 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, on the second floor. I am going to talk to you about the stock market today, folks. I sent a video out to all of the people that follow me, both of them. And what I said was, we have probably the most bearish scenario that I have seen since January of 2021. Folks, I posted the chart here of the E-mini S&P, and you can see here we've hit the 61% retracement from the high in January of that year three times. You can see the perfect symmetry here between lows and highs. It's 27 up days, just absolutely is about as neat as you can possibly get. And the second thing is if you look at the secondary high, this is also going right up to where it should have stopped. It's either today or tomorrow. That's 27 days up. That ends up today. Now, as you know, we've had uh, Norm Winsky on on Monday. We had Tim Bost on yesterday. Today we have Jeff Huge, uh, Tim Bost, and, of course, uh, Norm Winsky do the Astro stuff, and they tell us about this big solar eclipse that is here with the new moon. And we also have Mercury in, this, in, the, in the wheelhouse here. We also have Jupiter. These are very, very rare things that do not happen very often. Uh, Norman pointed out that 10 out of 10 times, this has caused a correction in the market, sometimes a severe correction. Tim Boss pointed out the same type of thing. Does that mean it's going to happen? No. The very first thing I did when I did this video last night, I said, this is where you've got to be the most careful. Because when I come out and say something like this, I'm only right about 60% of the time, and this could be one of those things. I'm going to show you a couple things that might be telling us that we're wrong, but we're going to see what it is right now. What I did do, I didn't sell the S&P. I sold the weakest of the three stock indices, which happens to be the Russell, because it's been in a tremendous bear market. The rally we've had here has not exceeded the 382 retracement from the high of December 18 months ago. And so that's why I'm looking at it that way. Okay, so that's the other thing. The second thing is that we, we uh, I'm not gonna go into that secondary thing because that trade is working and I should probably shut up and not say any more about it. But anyway, let's move on to a couple of things that I wanted to, to mention to you. We've had an order here. I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to explain, someone asked me to explain why I was bearish to gold up at the 2060 level. And I did that three, four times on here. But I'm going to show you the same pattern upside down. Okay. This is the same pattern that was in the gold, only it's upside down. You see this big black line here? That's a 1.618 expansion. Bryce Gilmore taught me a lot of things during the times he used to come to the Pismo Beach House. This was the most important, in my opinion, because it tells you that you're at the end of the line. The truck stops here. You know, you can't pass the buck any farther than where you are right now. We've been waiting for seven days to buy the hogs at 85.10. Today they opened lower. It went down to 84.80. The 1.618 expansion on that move, are you looking at that, folks? That move took seven months to complete, and it hit that number it almost within 10 points. It went 10 points below it and immediately rallied $1,200 today. It's given a little bit of it back, but it's still up strongly on the day. So that's telling us that this thing is acting actually pretty good. So what you do in a case like that is you make your first profit objective, which was you know, $1,000, you put your stop at break even on the second part. But let me explain to you why the 1.618 is so very, very important. 
This comes out, this is what you're going to be looking at here now, is a spiral mirror ballus, also known as the Fibonacci spiral. What is important about this, now this is expanded, of course, you can see the pyramid triangle right in here like that, the isosceles triangle. But if you look at this, you see how it goes around. This is where the 1.618 expansion stops right here. It starts in here and makes this spiral just like this and goes around and around and it gets to that point. That's why that's important. The mathematics behind that, which is really simple, it's addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, is shown in the, the uh, chambered nautilus. The, the uh, ammonite, which we have, uh, those usually come from Madagascar. Sarah and I collect them, and uh, they're really spectacular because uh, I have, I think I have four of them on my desk here. But you can see this is the same Fibonacci spiral that you have through here. And this is the square, just right out of Pythagoras, Pythagorean theorem, that shows the five-eighths and three-eighths and all that stuff. And that's what we're trying to do. And when we put these things together on a price chart, that tells us that we're at a spot where may it may work and it may not work, and that that's all you have to all you have to try to remember. Now let me show you why I think we could possibly be wrong in the stock market. And this one's I've been talking about this one for quite some time, but this is a pattern that worked very well for about a week, but it didn't it didn't work over the last several days. Look what's happened to Apple, folks. Remember that magic number of 66, 166 a share? We hit 167 today. And not only that, the perfect timing that was here, which happened last week on a Friday, is now broken. It's gone to the upside. Now, we haven't matched the exact ratio yet, and maybe this is a false breakout, but that's, that's number one, okay? Now, the second thing that could be happening, that I, all I think is I could be wrong by a few days, but I don't think I'm wrong eventually but by friday i think i'll be proven right but then again i could be wrong right now it looks okay but okay it only counts in uh, horseshoes and hand grenades let's move up here and take a look at the next one that i wanted to look at which is the uh i think it is the dow jones transportation because i watched that because that's really a big thing in the economy also stan harley pointed that out to us yesterday now if you'll notice here, you can see the beautiful ABCD patterns here. There's your ABCD at the top. There's your ABCD at the bottom. We're right at the 61% retracement yesterday, and we closed lower. And look at this. We're coming right back to it again. That means we could continue going higher. This would tell us that this market is not going to top until Thursday, Friday, or even possibly Monday. That's the timing factor that you have to look at. So I, I hope that make sense of what I'm looking at because I am being very careful. Right now we're in a break even situation, but you know that could easily change and we could lose and go on to the next one. And that's all you really have to do. Now I had more people ask me in the last two or three days about the Astro stuff because I have these folks on as guests and I, I respect everything they do, do and I've written some books on astrology that give me some ideas. But the astrology stuff, <laughs> that takes second place to the pattern recognition, folks, because that, that's how I make my living. You know, you can't, you can't put an order in saying, you know, uh, buy on when Venus squares Uranus. They ain't going to take that. So I'm going to go through this when we come back. 877-927-6648. We'll be... Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com 
TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. Okay, folks. Uh, when I got into this astrology stuff, you know, this started back at Drexel when Mary Rivers came in and said, "Buy silver at uh, eleven forty-five in the morning and sell it two days later at ten twenty in the morning." and you know, that worked very well, but she was only bullish and it was going up in a wildly bullish market from 76 through 1980. So it was he heavily skewed. That's why she had so many winning trades in a row. But if you followed it after that, it was only right about 60% of the time. I brought up this chart showing you the full moons and new moons on here because that's basically nothing than a 14 day cycle. When it starts the cycle with the new moon, which is to tomorrow, which is the, 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 the conjunction at zero degrees, and it goes around to 180 degrees in 14 days, and that is the full moon. And all I do is I go in and I look to see where the prices are at that time, where there's expansion, contraction, A, B, C, D, and that's what I try to do. I keep it as simple as possible. I don't bring it out very much because I frankly don't trust it because I don't understand a lot about it. The reason why I don't, I'm looking at only a small piece of this puzzle. That's why we had Tim Bost on and also Norm Winsky. They understand a little bit more, a lot more than I do, okay? Because they're looking at the inner planets, you know, like Mercury and Venus and even as far out as Jupiter. And when these aspects line up and they can go back and look historically what happened during those times, then you know that it's going on. If you remember, I've shown you these still stelliums where all these planets line up in one particular houses. That's what got me into astrology, folks. When I was working with Dr. Miller in 1986, uh, she showed me uh, the major lows in the stock market in 1932. Uh, she showed me the top in uh, 19, when was it, 1973. She showed me both bottoms in 1974, the big bottom in 1972 in the stock market before we exploded to the upside and then of course 1987 which was the crash year when all of those planets lined up in a certain house and all these are in the certain houses that that's when it all lines up now we don't have something like that right now we have some things that are powerful but nothing like that all I'm looking is the fact that we've been at these levels for so long that it makes good sense to think well maybe this could be 
the high, and that's what I'm that's what I'm looking at. I'm, I'm taking a probability. Now we started out pretty good, but that doesn't mean we're going to end that way, you know. So that's all I can tell you. And I mentioned to the folks, I said, whenever I get this way, be careful, be very very careful. Now getting back to ABCDs, let's take a little trip across the pond. Not going to cost you anything, but we've been watching this thing unfold for quite a while. This is the uh, the FTSE. Uh, you can see the double ABCD patterns in here. I question this one right here. It fits pretty nicely, but the problem is it's not a ratio. It's not a 382 or anything. And if I can't get at least a 382 ratio, I don't count it as a swing because it's a non tradable swing. So I, I don't trade it. So that's basically what I'm looking at. Okay. Now let's move on here, and I want to go across the pond, or go across the channel there. And, no, you're going to go north, not across the channel. We're going to go up to, to Germany, and we're going to look at the German DAX. And here you have a very, very nice symmetrical three-drive to a top pattern that is really nice. That's the one, as you see it in here, you can see the yellow one. That's the, that's the big butterfly, okay? But then the three-drive is the one that's color coded. You can see this and it's perfectly symmetrical folks. Because so it's it's and this is a four hour chart. So this is several days forming and we've come right up to it. This is one of those times which you're setting right at the 1.618, just like we were in gold the other day, just like we were in hogs today. Same type of thing. So this is what we're trying to do when we're you know, pointing these things out to you is that we're trying to get the patterns and ratios to line up perfectly. Eh, if the astral stuff comes in, that's good. But if not, you, you can't go to the bank and say, hey, Venus is squared Uranus, uh, put 50 bucks in my account. Not going to happen. No, no, no. You've got to be able to say, look, I got to buy here, sell here, put the order in and do it. I don't talk too much about the astro I talk very little about it for two reasons. One, my knowledge level is a little skeptical. Uh, let's put short, short change. And even though I've studied a lot, I, I don't understand it. And I'm part of it was being a Catholic. I was, uh, you know, they, they told us when we were little, if you, if you did astrology, you were the uh, instrument of the devil. But these are the so, same people that told me that I was going to go to hell if I ate fish on Friday. And uh, But anyway, that was an economical thing. Anyway, that, that's what I'm trying to get across here because people ask me, why don't I do more astro stuff? The reason why is Shane Smolian, Norm Winsky, Tim Boss, Bill Meridian, all those guys are far, far better at doing that type of thing. I, I make I try to make money at this, folks. And all I do is keep it as simple as possible. Uh, simplicity beats complexity. That's the bottom line of, you know, what my whole idea is. And uh, so I, I hope that makes sense because I try to answer the questions the best that I can. But here again, you know, it could be wrong. Now, let me take a look. We looked at uh, Bank of America, the, uh, not Bank of America. We looked at the... Um, Apple showing you that it's acting very, very strong. Some of these other stocks are not. Here was the big news we had yesterday with Bank of America, and the stock never, ever traded above the 382 retracement of that whole move more than five minutes, and it's down a tad today. So that was one. The other one we looked at was Goldman Sachs. I'm not going to bring it up because I don't want to be uh, running over these things over and over again to what they're doing, but um, I'm just trying to get a uh, a handle on what I think things are what, what things are happening now I wanted to talk just a moment about silver because uh, we mentioned this yesterday and silver had a big reversal today which was uh, I'll tell you I, like I said yesterday I don't even looking at this this is just a 60 minute chart but there was the 382 yesterday there it was again late in the afternoon we pointed that one out now the market did not make the ABCD level to the downside. All it was able to do was to complete this small ABCD pattern right in here. And then it's rallied to be up on the day. Now, gold isn't even close to being up on the day, but silver is really moving, folks. The premium on buying silver coins like uh, used silver dollars or the silver tokens is 16%. That, that's so ridiculous, I can't even believe it. In all my years of doing this, it was 4%. And now, in the past few years, it's gone all the way out to 16%. Part of that is uh, the demand. It, you know, there's, it's not hard to make it. All that you get is a John Vay machine, stamp the coin, and you got a, you got a silver coin. So 
That's why uh, you've got to be really careful in here shorting this puppy because sometimes it works good like it did here, but uh, we'll see. We still got gold to the downside. Uh, we think we've got a really good handle on that, and it should get to 1962. That comes out in a few days probably because we did rally 20-some dollars from the bottom today, which was a very strong bottom right up to the 61% retracement of that previous swing. And now we're going to have to get in and pay a few bills because when we come up in the break, which is going to be here in about 45 seconds or so, we'll have Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights. So if you have any questions for him, it's 877-927-6648. And he has some of the very best stuff that is available out there. So we'll be right back, boys and girls. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we have Jeff Hughes of Alpha Insights on the horn today, sitting in the Chapel of Trading. My friend, how are you today? I'm doing great, Larry. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, it's our pleasure. You have some great stuff. You're going to talk to us about the breadth of the market right now? Yeah, you know, as um, I've been saying for some time now, breadth, uh, breadth has been uh, narrowing, and it's now extremely narrow. In fact, um, what we're looking at right now is a performance distribution dating back to the February 2nd high in the S&P 500. And if you look to the right-hand side, you can see a lot of the major indexes, especially banks, are deep in the negative territory. In fact, there's only three major indexes 
uh, that are actually positive since the February 2nd high through yesterday's close and, and probably through right now. And, and honestly, um, the, the one on the far left is the New York FANG index. These are the top FANG stocks, the largest mega cap growth stocks in the, uh, in the world. Um, the second best performer has been the NASDAQ 100, and the third best performer has been the S&P 100, all of which are dominated by these seven stocks. You know which ones they are. Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon, NVIDIA, Tesla, and Meta. Uh, these stocks are trading at valuation levels that are more extreme today than they actually were when the market topped back in January of 2022. And in fact, if you look at the average stock in the S&P 500, looking at the equal weighted S&P 500 index, it's actually down 6% since the February 2nd high. Wilshire wow. Financial or Wilshire 5000 index, which is the broadest index, is down almost 2%. The average stock in the NASDAQ 100 is down almost 2%. And small and mid cap stocks are down around 10%. Uh, banks are down almost 27%. So, I mean, this has been a, a market led by seven stocks. And if you don't own those stocks, you are not making any money since February uh, 2nd. Yeah, that. I can understand that, that's for sure. I saw these banking stocks, boy, they have taken them to the cleaners. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about sentiment. You've done some really great work here. So where do we stand in the sentiment gauge today, Jeff? Yeah, you know, and, and I won't take credit for this. This is the CNN the Fear and Greed Index, and it's uh, really a, a compilation of around seven different market measures uh, that really look at some – uh, inflection of behavior in the stock market, be it momentum or breadth or volatility. And when they combine them all together, we can get a sense of whether uh, the the sentiment around the market has, um, is neutral, has been complacent or is greedy or is fearful and uh, um, maybe uh, presenting an opportunity. Today, we are back up to the highest level that we've seen since the February 2nd peak. Uh, we actually got to around 70 on Monday, closed last night at 68. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to hit a new extreme high in order for us to reach that point of complacency that tends to coincide with a major market top. We are right there right now uh, with respect to uh, the level that existed back in August of 2022, uh, when we made that uh, uh, important high at about 4,300 on the S&P. Uh, we're near the same levels we saw uh, in uh, November and in February, where we also had these interim tops where the market uh, sold off aggressively, in, in the most recent case, about uh, 13%. Wow, I know. I looked at that, and I looked at the market, and I, I made a mistake. I, I got too emotional doing a video last night. I said, the only thing bad about this going short the market now here is because I can't see any reason how it could fail. And I said, every time I've ever <laughs> said that, it's not a good thing. So I said, make sure you protect yourself, because I looked at this thing, and I said, how could anybody buy stocks up in here? But, you know. Oh, you know, the three people that subscribe to me, uh, two of them believe me, the other one is still skeptical. So let's take a look here uh, at the next one here and we'll uh, look at the internals because this is another thing. When I look at this, I said, come on, I mean, give me a break. This can't be happening, but there it is. You want to explain to folks what this means? Yeah, we look at three measures of internal health of the market. The, the market's breadth. This is just the S&P 500, mind you. Uh, we look at the momentum and we look at net advancing volume. And the top frame really is a measure of uh, the dark blue line is the five-week moving average of net advancing issues. And what we're seeing is that we're rising, right? It's positive. About 22% of issues are, are net advancing as of yesterday's close. But that's a lower high than we saw in, in the late January uh, peak of this year. So it's a negative divergence given where the market is very close to that high. Uh, also, if we look at the momentum, this is an unweighted measure of momentum of the S&P 500 constituents. Again, fairly positive and a much lower high than we saw back in late January. And then, of course, uh, the, the bottom frame is the net advancing volume. And, and while we've seen some improvement uh, in net advancing volume, uh, the recent high of the five-week moving average is well below 
uh, the past January high. So these negative divergences tend to emerge before a major trend change, and that's where we think we are headed. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's another one. Let's get to the next one. I love these charts because I – I, I can understand what it means. I, I don't trade off of it because, you know, I just look at the price chart, and if I see it's got a pretty good chance, I'll take a uh, calculated risk speculation is what I call it. I don't gamble. I'm an intelligent risk speculator. And hold on, let's get this one up here so you'll be able to see it here. This is the VIX. This is the one that they had on uh, CNBC yesterday showing you the fact that the VIX was at the lowest level in three years or something. Is this what you're seeing Jeff? Yeah, you know, what, what we're seeing here, Larry, is two different views of the VIX. The top frame is the VIX itself, the volatility index. The bottom frame is the VVIX, the volatility of volatility. And historically, if you just look back at the pattern, when the VIX is making a new low, anytime the VVIX, the volatility of volatility, does not confirm it, in other words, it diverges positively, makes a higher low, that tends to precede a reversal in the VIX. And so uh, oftentimes it's a VIX spike. And what we're thinking at this point, just given the, the weight of the evidence around this, is that uh, we would expect a pretty dramatic reversal in the VIX, uh, perhaps much higher than the recent highs. We haven't seen a VIX print above 40% in over two years. We think by the time this volatility surge peaks, it will likely achieve a, a level far above the 40% level that we've uh, uh, kind of wow. looked at as kind of being um, extreme fear, if you will. I remember the VIX hitting 89 back in the dot-com, uh, you know, fiasco <laughs> when it was bottoming. But, boy, that was uh, – those were days where – and that was really volatility. I, I, you know, when I saw that dot com thing, you know, I, I thought I was seeing a once in a generation type move, which in fact the market dropped eighty five percent. But boy, that I mean everybody was just absolutely incredibly bullish. You remember they used to have the. I, I don't want to take your time. Sorry, we're going to take a break here. But I remember the ads. Remember the guy that uh, he was taking pictures of his uh, rear end on a fax machine and then sending it to someone who was bearish? I, I, I always remember that one. And, and, and the 12-year-old the kid that had his own helicopter? Oh, those were oh, back yeah. in the days. Of the, those were fun. Hey, we're going to take a break here. We'll be back with uh, Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights here uh, in just a few short seconds, I hope. And then we'll pay a few bills and everything will be copacetic. I hope I got the timing right, and I did. We'll be right back, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. 
Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, Jeff, uh, Jeff Huge on the line here. Uh, Jeff, would you do me a favor, please? I posted a chart of the VIX pattern uh, showing topping and bottoming. Could you could you send me a copy of that chart? Because I tried to copy and paste it, but it's got those black things, you know, from the uh, snag snag it thing. And I'd like to get it as clean as I possibly could. Uh, just send it to Larry at TradingTutor.com if you would. Right now. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no not now. Anytime, anytime. No, no, no. We, we, okay. Just tell us about this chart, because this, to me, you showed this to us last time you were on a couple weeks ago, and that was one of the reasons I was starting to look for a potential top, and now it's jumping out at me. But if you would send that to me, I'd really like to, <clears throat> to take a look at it. Sure. Well, let me tell you a little bit about this study. You know, we've, we've looked at this over the past year, and it's been a pretty regular repeating pattern. Every time the VIX has spiked up above 34%, it's been in the neighborhood of a tradable bottom in the S&P 500, uh, you know, within days to possibly weeks at the latest. Um, the flip side of that is every time we've gotten down below 20% on the VIX, it's marked an interim high. And, um, you know, most recently, of course, that was the February 2nd high where the VIX was bouncing around kind of sub 20 percent for some time. But we just reached a level, Larry, last night uh, where we closed at 16.83 percent on the VIX. That was the lowest level seen since early January 2022, just one day before the S&P 500 topped uh, at its all time record high. We think that's uh, significant for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, you know, we think it's, it's extremely compressed. And when VIX gets this compressed, uh, comp compressed rather, it, it tends to revert to the mean, okay? And it's a very mean reverting index in the first place. Second of all, if in fact the pattern holds together, it probably marks an interim high in the S&P 500. It might even be yesterday's high. Um, we're certainly within the neighborhood of that, most likely. We'll know for certain once we see a reversal in the VIX and a daily close above the 21-day uh, moving average. Um, and once that occurs, it usually never looks back. We just we just keep going off to the races. And like I said in the prior frame, um, you know, we were talking about the possibility of a VIX spike, and I think a surge in VIX well above that 34 to 35 percent range that's kind of held the uh you know uh, the extremes in the past year i think we're going to exceed 40 percent this time and possibly much higher uh, uh before all is uh is complete let me ask you a question you've been doing this a long time uh and i'd like to ask you 33 years <laughs> 33 wow that's pretty good listen uh what i'd like to ask you is this you know whenever i hear someone like janet yellen or uh, burn bernanke or What's his name? Uh, Greenspan say anything Jay, like, "Well, this, this, uh, this is yeah, yeah." Jerome Powell. That, well, this uh, this uh, uh, serious thing is all finished. Like our banking thing, that's all taken care of. That's not going to be a problem anymore. I mean, I take that. I mean, I, that's to me, that's a giant red flag. I mean, because I don't trust those people. 
as far as I could throw them. And, you know, I, I, I do you feel that same way because I, I that's why I'm a chartist, because I've seen him do this time and time again. And uh, that's why yeah, when they let say, me put oh, it everything's way, OK Larry. now. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Let me put it this way. Um, in April of 2008, Ben Bernanke came out and said, uh, by our work, we see a mild recession in the back half of 2008. Well, what we really saw was the greatest financial crisis since the Great Depression. So yes. they miscalculated. <laughs> mm-hmm. The Fed is often wrong. And, uh, you know, so far they haven't predicted anything correct. Um, you know, they got the inflation wrong. Uh, they Negative they, interest you know, rates. <laughs> yeah, the, the whole thing. They, they just yeah. have completely been reactionary to whatever the uh, you know prevailing forces of the economy are. They're yeah. not uh, good at predicting. Their models are, are very backward looking. Yeah, the dumbest one to me was negative interest rates. I mean, a three-year-old could figure that one out. I mean, you have guys with PhDs, you know, say, I, I'm going to give you your money and I'm going to charge you for holding your money. And I can't guarantee that you're going to get it back. Hmm. That's a really good deal. You know, I mean, hello, <laughs> operator. My God, that's like 16 or 30 pieces of silver almost. Let's get on to the next one here. You're looking at the most bearish setup we've had since August. I think so. You know, um, Back in August, we saw what I believe was primary wave to a counter trend advance that peaked on August uh, 16th. And from that level, we saw a an epic plunge from about 43 and a quarter uh, on the S&P 500 all the way down to 3,500. That was 825 uh, S&P points in a matter of two months. OK, yeah, uh, we've then point. basically retraced uh, about 61.8 percent of uh, that decline, I, I take it back, 78.6% of that decline through the uh, February 2nd high. We haven't quite uh, gotten back. We've actually retraced about 86.4% uh, of the uh, decline off of the um, uh, February 2nd high into the uh, March 13th low. Interestingly, um, you've got a lot of similar numbers here. You've got October 13th, December 13th, March 13th. You've got uh, December 22nd, February 2nd, another 2-2. We've got um, uh, uh, April 18th, so basically April 13th plus 5. Um, we think the next big number on the downside could be something like May 22nd. Um, our cycle work here, we've, we've um, applied a 50-day cycle uh, that's been very observable uh, certainly going back to the August highs into the uh, the closing prices or, or the lows of uh, October. And if we just look at that 50-day cycle, we can see the ebb and the flow is pretty consistent. And, and the next bottom that we see is coming in uh, late uh, May uh, in that May 22nd time horizon. What's also interesting is Paul McCray Montgomery's Fibonacci time cycle work uh, is at play here as well on, on – uh, April 6th, we had a minor Montgomery cycle turn date. And on the 20th, tomorrow, we had a major Montgomery turn cycle date or cycle turn date. And, and I think what we're really seeing is this minor to major cycle rollover where we had a minor uh, um, uptrend that's turning into a major downtrend. And so far, the count looks like this. We've got Intermediate wave one down into the October 13th low. We've got intermediate wave two up into the February 2nd high. We've got minor wave one down into the March 13th low. And now we've got what appears to be a top in minor wave two at yesterday's high. So if we're correct, we should see this throw over close back into the channel and uh, break down. And once we've taken out kind of that um, I would say maybe the March 22nd high, which is that uh, wave A high, that would confirm, I think, uh, most of my suspicions that we're in the midst of minor wave three down, uh, which should take us into a third wave decline at three degrees of trend and could carry the S&P you know, down into the mid 2000s, Larry. Oh, yeah. Well, that would be a that would certainly be some. Tell the folks how they can get your free newsletter, Jeff. Yeah, you know, uh, we publish this newsletter the first Saturday of every month. The next publication date is May 6th. Uh, you can sign up on Substack at hugeinsights.substack.com. Uh, the title of the newsletter is Huge Insights, The Big Picture, uh, where we cover everything from macroeconomic to market issues. 
and we make our forecast for the month ahead. Thank you, my friend. Listen, we're going to have you on again soon and stay above ground on the green side of the grass and keep living <laughs> the dream, my friend. I'll do my best. Jeff, Thanks, Larry. Look that. forward to it. Jeff Hughes, Alpha Insights. Stand up guy, folks. Get his letter. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, I just made a really cool chart, and I can't find it. Here it is. I got it right there in front of me. We're going to bring it into the den here. This is what I'm seeing, boys and girls. Like I said, be careful what you ask for. Anyway, uh, this is the high that we were looking at. Uh, we're now uh, uh, made the 61% retracement of that already. You see this low here was 786 of this one, 50% of that one. This is telling us that we're probably going to go up into Thursday and Friday and uh, maybe get this level of uh, 4220. We're only 40 handles away. You know, we gained 30 of those handles. Look at this. We dropped 40, 50 handles on the downside, and you come back and you gain 30 handles back real quick. This market is not backing off. And I think by pointing it out, that thing with the Dow Jones transportation and also Apple, they're still buying out there. Now, the things that Jeff brought up, yep, those are good. But you got to go with what the charts are telling you, folks. This thing is not, not broken. The, look at this. This is not broken, the downtrend. In the last six days, not one time. It's never taken out the previous, took it out. Wow. This is a good old tarot grammar from St. Benedict's 
Catholic school. Anyway, that's what you're looking at here, folks. The stool is still up. and we get below this level, which is um, 41, uh, 35, then, yeah, we might get a pretty good move to the downside. But until that happens, you know, we're still going higher. And uh, like I said, uh, be careful with what I say because, you know, sometimes I'm wrong and often wrong, but never in doubt. That's my motto. So let's uh, keep that in mind, folks. So we've had a heck of a run here at TFN. And remember when we had the old uh, negative interest rates on the bonds, how they kept trying to feed us that, and we were looking at that big ABCD up there at 177, and people said, man, are you nuts, man? You've missed the whole boat. And like I said to Jeff, that to me was the biggest no-brainer I've ever seen in all my business. Hey, live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. Stay tuned for the afternoon update.